In today's new research review, we're going to be talking about a study that found that inversion therapy combined with physical therapy was effective in reducing the need for surgery in people with herniated discs in their lower back. Hey, how's it going everybody? Remy Sovereign here from RemySovereign.com. In today's new research review, what we're going to be talking about is the study that found that physical therapy combined with inversion therapy was effective in reducing the need for surgery in people with lumbar disc protrusions at the L405 and L5S1 level that were impinging on the nerve root and causing significant pain. So to jump into things, what this research paper is titled is Inversion Therapy in Patients with Pierce Single Level Lumbar Discogenic Disease, a Pilot Randomized Trial. So this research paper was published in 2012 in the Disability and Rehabilitation Journal. And what the authors conducted here was that they took these individuals aged 18 to 45 years old who had these disc protrusions and were impinging on the nerve root and causing pain. And these individuals with the disc protrusions, their single best initial recommendation was surgery from based on the neurosurgeon's recommendation. And so due to long wait times, the researchers in agreement with the neurosurgeon and the medical com community involved were able to conduct this study. And what they did, the researchers, was they randomized participants into two separate groups. So they had 26 people recruited, but due to a few dropping out or not meeting the inclusion criteria, they were only able to assess 22 individuals. So they had assigned 11 individuals with the disc protrusions to physical therapy alone group, and they assigned 13 individuals to physical therapy combined with inversion therapy group. And the duration of the physical therapy was over four weeks. And the physical therapy consisted of the physical therapist recommending, giving, recommending and giving advice about their injury, educating the individuals, and advi advising on certain exercises for individuals to perform. Now, what they found was that after the four weeks and then doing the pre and post kind of follow up after six weeks, they found that the individuals in the physical therapy and inversion therapy group, 10 of those 13 individuals were able to avoid surgery at that time. And only two out of 11 individuals in the physical therapy group were able to avoid surgery. So the important takeaway here is that Inversion therapy combined with physical therapy seemed to play a significant role or seemed to play some sort of role in these individuals avoiding surgery when compared to the physical therapy alone group. Now, the inversion therapy, the kind of protocol for it during, during those four weeks was that individuals were performing six sets, two minutes per set on an inversion table or tilt table three times per week for four weeks in combination with that physical therapy. So that's important to mention just because the protocol uh, may be different and may influence the individual's experience or what they're ultimately maybe getting out of it in terms of the effectiveness of that inversion table or that traction stretching on the spine. So with regards to that and those findings now, it's really interesting to see that this is one of kind of the only studies that indicate that inversion therapy is effective. Uh, there's a lot of limited studies with regards to inversion therapy and inversion tables specifically, and there's not much kind of good research out there, but this is a solid study that showed that there was a reduction in surgery and these people were able to avoid surgery 10 out of 13 compared to only the two out of 11. And it's important to note that all those individuals, their initial single best treatment initially was surgery. So we can see that inversion therapy, such as using an inversion table or tilt table in this study, seems to be a, a, an effective method when combined with physical therapy and reducing that need for surgery and possibly helping with recovery. Now, they did other assessments as well, pre and post. So they took pre and post MRIs and they looked at various questionnaires as well to assess the individual's kind of pain levels, disability, ability to perform activities of daily living, pre and post. And there were no significant differences between pre and post or between these groups with regards to those tests. However, one of them did approach to statistical significance, which is the Oswestry Disability Index, which it approached statistical significance in the inversion group, which just may further support that inversion therapy is working in combination with physical therapy and kind of reducing uh, a disability or pain and reducing that need for surgery. Now, takeaway from this, guys, is that here is some evidence, specific evidence to support inversion therapy, specifically a tilt table or inversion table in the recovery from a herniated disc in the lower back. Now, a lot of people out there tend to be skeptical about inversion tables in general, 
and about their usage and effectiveness, and rightfully so, people should be. Because an inversion table is not for everyone, which is important to keep in mind. Now, with my, I'll share my personal experience. The inversion table was the single best purchase that I made during my recovery, and it was the best tool, in a sense, that helped me with my recovery. Now, the key thing is, is a lot of people kind of get mistaken, and they think that the inversion table is the tool that's gonna heal them specifically. And they have no regard to nutrition, exercise, sleep, or removing pain-inducing activities. And they think that the inversion table is kind of like the magic tool that's gonna work for them. And I think this is where a lot of people kind of get mistaken and wonder why inversion therapy or an inversion table doesn't work for them. And the thing is, the important point here is that inversion table is kind of an accessory tool that can be applied to an effective recovery program. Because specifically, if you're not reducing those pain-inducing activities, then inversion table is not gonna be effective at all, essentially in the treatment, because if you keep making things worse by engaging those pain-inducing activities, that inversion table is not gonna be very effective in helping you make a recovery or re reducing your symptoms. You may just ex experience more pain because you keep going in those pain-inducing activities. So that's the important thing, is that inversion table is just an accessory tool that can accompany an already good rehab program. Now, that being said too, inversion table is not for everyone. Some people may experience pain or may not be comfortable using an inversion table, and that could be a result of other issues or other underlying issues occurring. And I'll share with you my personal experience because it wasn't always perfect for me using an inversion table. While I do say it was the best purchase that I made during my recovery, it wasn't always perfect for me. And there were times that post-recovery, I did experience some significant flare-ups in my lower back, but it wasn't exactly disc related. So after my recovery, what I noticed was that I stopped using the inversion table consistently. And as I was getting back to exercise and as I was sitting consistently throughout the day for long periods of time, sometimes I would feel very compressed as, a, as upon doing all that sitting and all that exercise. So I would go to decompress on the inversion table. Now, what I noticed is that going from those significant compression forces all the way to those significant decompressive forces immediately, upon getting off the inversion table, after using it for a few minutes, I had a significant pain in my lower back and I credit that to something more joint related. Don't exactly know, but I do have kind of diffusion of my SI joints. I have arthritic facet joints. And so there could be some sort of inflammatory process as a result of me stretching my spine out that may have accumulated. And that could have caused a significant flare up, which lasted about a minute, but then the pain went away. So the point being there is that people with other underlying issues and inversion table may not be for you or for them, but with regards to individuals that may not have those underlying issues and may have a herniated disc that's causing an impingement of their nerve. This study here kind of supports the fact that inversion table or inversion therapy can be helpful in reducing those, the need for surgery specifically with regards to this study, but also symptoms and may help with recovery as well. And I also can I just attest to that from my personal experience it was one of the, mo the most helpful kind of just accessory tool that I purchased and just wanted to kind of address this because there is very limited information out there about inversion therapy and inversion tables. And this is a pretty solid study in my opinion, just regarding the use of inversion table. But important point that the authors also point out and something I completely agree with is that, and I already mentioned this kind of in the video, but in their conclusions is that the inversion table cannot be used alone as a single form of treatment and it needs to be combined because they didn't use this inversion table as a single form of treatment. They combined it with physical therapy, which is important to consider. And that's something I mentioned previously where the inversion table is just a good accessory tool to an already good recovery program that involves good nutrition, good exercise, good sleep, avoiding those pain inducing activities and engaging in um, those pain free activities. So with all that being said, guys, um, that so now what I, now another important consideration with regards to inversion therapy is the type of device you're using so they use a tilt table inversion table so this study can only really apply to a tilt table or inversion table and it can't really apply to other uh, traction devices which could influence the amount of traction that an individual experiences 
and it could kind of influence the recovery as well because different traction devices work differently. But also you got to consider the dosage. How many times are we performing per week? How many sets are you performing? How long are each set? So this protocol here was two minutes per, two minutes per set for six sets, three times per week over the course of four weeks, which seems to be a very effective protocol because when I was, when I used my inversion table and while I still do use it, I only use it for about a two, a three minute period max. As that's all I find that I need to really get that decompressive effect and kind of get that relief. Now, um, I think I also want to talk about. Now, if you're someone that currently uses an inversion table and you have experienced benefits, or you may not have experienced benefits and you may have actually got worse or just experienced pain using it, could love to hear your story, whether it's you had improvements using it or you had didn't have improvements using one. And if also this is your first time watching one of my videos, I'd love to... Now, if you're someone that currently uses an inversion table or you just currently... Now, if you're someone that currently uses an inversion table and you've noticed significant benefits from using it, whether that's for a herniated disc or just for the decompressive effects, I'd love to hear your story. Or if you're someone that has used an inversion table and have actually experienced bad effects or maybe negative effects, I'd also love to hear your story as well. And also, if there's any type of research or kind of type of video you guys would like me to do, please leave a comment below as I'd be happy to look into it and address it in a future video. And also, if this is your first time watching one of my videos or this video, be sure to subscribe as I'm always posting new tips regarding lower back injuries and lower back recovery. Okay guys, so that's it for today's research review. I wish you guys all the best and a successful and productive day and take care.